Is he going to need you for to ex excavate the fish from his toaster? No, I'm going to give him some instructions, but he can do it. And uh, oop! Attack close to me. That's fine. I'm loud and annoying. So am I. <laughs> and uh, oop! Greetings, Internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hi. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me in our bedroom for our little program here. Okay. Uh, we watched The Batman. Uh, the Batman. The 2022 interpretation of the, the rat with wings guy. Uh, but before we get started, honey, oh, starring Robert Pattinson, a.k.a. Uh, Edward Cullen, a.k.a. Mr. Kristen Stewart, a.k.a. the guy from Tenet. Uh, to start off, honey, uh, what does Robert Pattinson mean to you in your life? I love Robert Pattinson. I have been a fan of his since he was Cedric Diggory in the Harry Potter movie. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, I didn't love the Twilight movies, but they're fun. They're they're uh, guilty pleasure fun. You saw all of them in the theater. I did. All of them with your mom, with Liz Fisher? With my mother, yep. Breaking part, breaking down one and two? Yeah. And which one? One of them was with uh, baby Luna Marie, right? Luna Marie, me, and my mom went to see the very first Twilight movie. Oh, okay. Which came out early 2009. Luna was born in January. And so she was like a month or two old, months old. So she was, she was in a... Cr- a- cradle what do you call uh, it? we had a crib a stroller thing like a stroller, a stroller. but then during the we movie a crib in the theater <laughs> with you we set up a little play fun for yeah. in the aisle um during the actual movie because i wanted her to be comfortable and quiet the whole time yeah so i took her out and i just like held her in my arms against my chest the whole time did you have to buy her a ticket no <laughs> <laughs> and one she baby. never <laughs> one baby she never woke up never made a noise Oh, so she slept through it all? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's an indictment she's... on uh, the Catherine Hardwick directed original. She, um, so, yeah, that was fun. She saw the first Twilight in theaters. You, you held her the entire time or she was in the crib? No, I held her in my arms because yeah. I wanted her to be cozy and comfortable. That could have been a recipe for disaster, my <laughs> darling. Like, you could have been that one person who brings, well, like, six-year-old kids have tantrums in the middle of movies and... Parents don't leave. I wouldn't have done it except I knew that she would be fine Mm. because she was a very chill baby. So I made sure she was fed before she had her diaper was clean. Yeah. And I knew she would just sleep in my arms the whole time. Mm. I wasn't worried. I guess the dark is a good thing for a kid. Like that wouldn't bother them. But I would think like the sounds, the the sound and the theory. But I guess maybe like an Avengers movie would be a lot more pew, 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 pew. Yeah. so, Luna Marie, now a lifelong Twilight fan? or <laughs> was You guys were just watching the original a few months ago, right? Her, uh, she was watching, yeah. I mean, from time to time, she puts a, one of the Twilight movies on the TV. And yeah. She kind of likes them, I guess. They're cheese. They're fun cheese. But they're fun. Like, they're so bad that they're fun. Yeah. Uh, then, post-Twilight, um, R. Pat's, Robert Pattinson, uh, Hasn't really found footing, I would say. He was in uh, Tenet, which was just... Uh, it was okay, but kind of messy at the end. Um, um, I would say he's actually had a very successful career. Okay. He seems to be in one or two movies a year. Oh, yeah. He's still successful. And every... A lot of movies that he's in are not... They're not like commercial successes. Correct. They're not big blockbusters, but yeah. he always gets critical praise for his work yeah he continues to get lots of work he's worked with he works with a lot of big name directors yeah so i think he's done very well yeah he he's he definitely gets work um but he hasn't found the box office success but then i was just reading that he has uh turned away from franchises after the twilight uh notoriety and fame and He's afraid of the paparazzi or whatever, <laughs> um, but he definitely dove back into it with the the this DC uh, cinematic universe uh, entry known as the Batman. Yeah, I have a feeling this is just the beginning of his DC work. 
I think yeah. th- I think there's a couple more Batman's and Batman movies that he's probably going to be a part of. Oh yeah, that's my feeling. Yeah, and if he plays his cards right, he's got a role for ten years, and he's going to make a gazillion dollars. Um, what does Matt Batman? <laughs> what does Batman mean to you in your life, honey? Uh, I I'm a fan of Batman. Yeah, as a character, and I've I've seen a lot of the movies that have been made. Like here and there, I've missed. I I haven't seen all of them, but right. I like them. Yeah, I I like I like that whole world of Gotham and yeah. Some are better than others in terms of the Batman movies, but uh, for me, I always think of uh, Michael Keaton, Robert Patton, Michael <laughs> Keaton, Batman. Uh, I think of Michael Keaton uh, in the nineteen eighty nine movie, and. There's a lot of talk of, oh, Iron Man started the superhero movie in whenever Iron Man came out, 98, 99. Uh, but to me, in 1989, let me, let me confirm that. And that, uh, oop. Okay, uh, I was way off. Uh, Batman with Keaton, 1989. Iron Man uh, with Robert Downey Jr., 2008. So, but my point was that uh, a lot of people say Iron Man kicked off superhero movies. I disagree. And when I was, whatever I was, 12 in 1989, Batman came out with Michael Keaton. Yeah, it's it's not a perfect movie. And uh, Tim Burton probably didn't have the sensibilities for a classic comic book movie. Um, But I remember watching it in the theater and just being like, wow, this is something. And every once in a while, it'll be on somewhere or I'll watch something here and there. And it, it has its own style. But yeah, Tim Burton, who came back for the Danny DeVito Penguin uh, Batman number two uh, movie. Um, I just think it, for me, that's when comic book movies uh, really started. Yes, darling. My childhood Batman was Val Kilmer. Ah. At the, the year, the summer that Batman Forever came out. Mm-hmm. Oh, my cousin and I were obsessed with that movie. Yeah. We watched it a ton. We listened to the soundtrack. Yeah. Like loved it. I still like that movie. Drew Barrymore, Uma Thurman, Jim Carrey Jim as Carrey, the Riddler, Tommy Lee Jones. That is a fun movie. Yeah. And I didn't really like the ones that was it Joel Schumacher. Yeah. Made after that, but I still really like Batman Forever. Yeah. And oh yeah, Nicole Kidman was. Uh, oh yeah. The love interest, or I don't know what she was. Yeah, she was something. Yeah. A doctor or something. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. never saw the Michael Keaton Batman movie. Yeah. But. My introduction was Val Kilmer. Still, <laughs> <laughs> our neighbors are opening and closing their They're garage. Having a malfunction. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean Jim Carrey. I remember specifically hamming it up. Uh, red hair, green suit. Um, Those movies, or that movie, was really colorful, wacky, loud. Yeah. Um, I liked it. Yeah, uh, cartoony. Didn't yeah. take itself too seriously, but then I think. Uh, the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Clooney went way too cartoony. Um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, the Nolan movies, I thought ambitious filmmaking achievements, but very uneven and not great endings. Um, but uh, here we are with Batman, Robert Pattinson, uh, directed by Matt Reeves, who did Cloverfield. Did you ever see that? No. It's a lot Is of that- shit. It's a lot of shaky cam and then about 45 seconds of a, of a big dinosaur wrecking, oh, wrecking a city. I saw Cloverfield 10 with John Goodman. Oh, did he that's do that? an excellent movie. That's a really good movie. Yeah, No, no, Matt, Matt Reeves did not okay. do that. Yeah, but I know it, it took the Cloverfield name had n- nothing to do with you. I mean, well, is it canon? Is it retcon? I, I don't know. Uh, Matt Reeves also did a couple of the Planet of the Eight movies. I, I could take them or leave them. I mean, they were... He did the second and third, I believe. Okay. The second one was amazing. Yeah. I thought. I thought it was so good. And then the third one, horrible. Uh, Terrible. Hated it. I can't. I remember James Franco was in the first one. (laughs) Uh, So uh, we saw uh, the Batman uh, today at Downtown Commons. We went to the noon show at the Cinemark Theater. Uh, We didn't bring the Wow Chows uh, because when we were... The runtime, it's two hours and 56 minutes. Now, you skip, take out the credits. It's about two hours and 47 minutes. And 
I remember discussing it. We were like, should we bring the kids? That's a lot of uh, sitting and watching a movie. And it's not a Marvel movie. So, I mean, just based on the trailers, you could, you could get the vibe uh, that it wasn't going to be a bunch of action and geared towards uh, children. So we decided not to bring them. Uh, but then today we had regret. <laughs> uh, they both were upset. Yeah. Because for some reason they both were under the impression that we were all foregoing. Yeah. So they learned the news this morning that they were not going to see it. Yeah, and we were like, uh, sorry, it's too late. And then I felt bad. But after watching it, I don't think they would have had a good time. I don't think so either. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't for their demographic i i think those two <laughs> kids particularly i don't it wouldn't have held their interest yeah uh we brought snacks uh because i no longer buy popcorn at the movie theater because well today waiting like I, I was waiting you went to the bathroom and i was waiting for you uh i was watching people in the line for popcorn and drinks and i just thought you suckers you dummies um because the profit margin, it drives me crazy. And that's the grandma teeing in me. That's my mom talking. Uh, the the older I get, the more I'm like, what's what's the profit margin on this? Yeah. How much are they making? And and how much does it cost to make at home? Like when I make popcorn for us at home, I make a buttload of it. And we put as much butter as possible. Oh, you put, you put like an entire bowl full of melted butter. And... It's fabulous. And it's the bomb, and it probably costs six cents to make. Um, So, uh, yeah, we, we didn't get it. Well, you brought uh, an, an Uncrustable, and then you brought me... Well, you would care, You brought in the contraband. You smuggled <laughs> it in. We had a sparkling water. We had a Quest Bar for me, and a Uncrustable for you. And you brought... One more um, thing? Oh, like a peanut butter... Oh, an Atkins bar. An Atkins bar. Which we ate on uh, the walk home. Uh, one thing I noticed was that... I mean, I've always noticed this, but... Uh, like, you buy the popcorn and then they have the butter dispenser thing. Uh, like... Whatever, 15 feet from the snack bar. But you could just walk up there and press a button... And the magic uh, coconut oil uh, popcorn butter starts spewing out. Yeah, no one's guarding it. Yeah, no one's guarding it. So, what? Sh- like, let's start bringing, like, so a loaf of bread? <laughs> some, <laughs> some, gar- some roasted garlic? Before we left the house, I suggested we put popcorn that we have here at home into Ziploc bags and bring it in with us. Yeah. And you could just put the butter right in the Ziploc bag. Yeah. Yeah. Or, no, no, well, no, it'll melt or it'll pool in the bottom. Bring just bring a cup, okay. Bring a Ziploc bag of popcorn, some a loaf of French bread, <laughs> some roasted garlic, some chives, a knife, a charcuterie board. But just bring like a like a plastic cup, and just fill it up with butter, and then you can dip dip your bread in there. Yum. Some balsamic oil. Yes. You have a good old time. Why don't more people do that? Uh, it was a, nearly a full theater. I mean, our whole row was full. Uh, the people next to you, honey, we had people on both sides of us. Uh, the people next to you, uh, talk about their food. These people had a feast and it smelled so good. Yeah. Uh, the guy, the girl was right next to me Mm -hmm. and then the guy she was with was on the other side. So I didn't have a very good view of him. Yeah. He he had, his lap was full of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. She had two pizza boxes on her lap. Yeah. And that, oop. The girl next to me had two pizza boxes on her lap yeah like full pizzas and they smelled so good yeah i think they were pizza hut yeah and then on top of that she had the giant large box of popcorn yeah and there was a slurpee going on oh they each had slurpees each had a slurpee and uh they were kind of there's a lot of shuffling going on because Uh, in order to get in the pizza boxes he had to hold the popcorn for her and then so back and forth and they were sharing now okay now first of all because I just got a glimpse of the girl because she stood up or whatever once or twice. They they weren't big people, right? They were like normal sized. I heard her talking. I heard her her voice a few times. Mm-hmm. She sounded very young. Ah. She might have been a teenager oh, okay. or a kid. Okay. Or a very tiny adult. I don't know. <laughs> and then you suspected because she had two Pizza Hut boxes. You su- you suspected that one was pizza and one was breadstick. Did you confirm that? Did I did you- not. Because I was. What kind looking- of reporter are you, honey? Well, 
I think she caught me. I kept looking at them. Oh. <laughs> so I don't want to stare. Can I get a piece of that? I, I When we were walking in, actually, I held the door for you. Then you walked in. And then there was a guy right behind you. And I held the door for him because he had the box of food going. And he had a couple hot dogs. And I was like, well, I'm holding the door for you, man. Can I, can I get a dog over here? Uh, well, these people obviously are not concerned about uh, profit margin. <laughs> I mean, like, like I am... And uh, Grandma Tian is... We are very sensible and responsible with our snack choices today. Yeah. The last time I bought something... Well, our strategy is now that we go Dollar Tree. And then the kids get $2. Well, $1.25 now. So two fifty to get two items. Um, but I I do not... Because it... Oh, like, like I explained. But uh, when we saw Godzilla vs. Kong was the last time I bought popcorn. Because that was like... When what happened? Gavin Newsom said we could go to the movies again or whatever. whatever. Uh, but it was our first movie in a while. I was like, I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna go ham <laughs> on the popcorn, and I bought a large popcorn, or I think you bought it for me, um, and uh, and I doused it in butter. And after about twenty percent, the butter was gone, and I didn't want to get up and get more butter. And I'm like, this is a lot of popcorn for eight nine dollars, and I'm not enjoying it. And it's a ripoff. Uh, so I stopped. No, no more. No more. Never again. Although I won't say never again. But <laughs> the pizza reminded me of Dominic Brasha. He loved getting pizza uh, at uh, the movies. and But he would eat it before the movie actually started. He would eat it during the trailer. Uh, but yeah, it was a, the, the little personal size where they cut it into four small pieces. Okay. The, the Batman, um, well, go ahead, honey. Your initial thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections. I liked it. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Way too long. Yeah. I felt the length. And I kept... That's what he said. <laughs> a few times throughout, I, I kept thinking, dang, this is long. And you don't want that thought to keep popping in your head when you're sitting and watching a movie. Yeah. You want to be engaged with what's going on instead yeah. of continuously thinking, wow, this is long. <laughs> yeah. I got the urge to check my watch a few times, but I didn't until I think it was two hours ish in. Maybe it was two and a half, and I was like, "Oh, there's another half hour of this." I did look at my um, phone. Well, you looked at your phone a few times. Is that to check if yes. Luna texts text us? Okay. Yeah, I'm paranoid when the kids are home alone. I'm paranoid. Just, yeah. I just like to glance at it real quick and see if I got a text. Gotcha. But I did look at it one time, and I was like, "Wow, it's only been an hour." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, same with me. I it, it's it's a good movie. It's yeah. it's it's a very good movie, but it's too long. It's way too long. Um. Okay. So, uh, let's get into it. Notes, ideas, observations. Are we hot doing? Takes. Are we doing spoiler free? No, I, okay. I I honestly don't know. I mean, we're not going to be careful. So this is your warning. Yeah. So, hey, guys, Spoilers ahead. hey, guys, when I wave my hands. So, hey, guys, uh, if you're watching the YouTube, mute my YouTube. And then when I wave my hand, guys, that means the spoiler's <laughs> over. So you can unmute me. All righty. Uh, okay. The R. Pats, Robert Pattinson. Um, his voice. There's a lot of whispering. There's a lot of monotone. Hushed. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and he, uh, he does uh, voiceover. A lot of narration in the beginning and the end. Like uh, like he's got a podcast. <laughs> uh, I, w- w- what did you think of that technique, honey? It was, a, it was kind of difficult to hear. Yeah. Like if someone crinkled a bag of candy near you, yeah. you, you could miss a word. Or if a teenager was eating two pizzas to herself, yeah. Um, I was worried it was going to be distracting or annoying. Because why does every Batman have that voice? I don't know. But it was fine. I thought because I'm very maudlin. As, as it went on, <laughs> yes. As it went on, it was fine. Yeah, it didn't bother me. Yeah. Well, like in the beginning, uh, he starts doing like a, like on Star Trek Captain's Log, whatever Star Date nine three eight, and uh, he's he's talking like this, very hushed tones, very monotone, but he's he's anguished at the same time. And then it doesn't. And then it goes away for two and a half hours. You're like, okay. Uh, but then he brings it back at the end because, I don't know, just to uh, 
to add to the uh, uh, perspective. Or I, I guess it's just easier to, to be like, this is what's happening in the movie, or this is how Robert Pattinson is feeling. Um, okay. His chin. So Batman wears a mask. He needs a strong jawline. Robert Pattinson's jawline is is one to behold. His chin and cheeks were beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I had the same thought. Yeah. Very uh, cut. Yeah. Very distinguished. Masculine, manly. Uh, and pro- I, I think the best, because I thought Affleck and Clooney, I don't like his chin. No. <laughs> I don't like that cleft. <laughs> Uh, but Pattinson's uh, structure, jaw structure. Best Batman chin ever. <laughs> Team Edward, am I right? Uh, the, uh, the the mascara eyeshadow, too much. So he, so Robert Pattinson puts on a bunch of uh, it's eyeshadow or is it? It's not. It's know. not mascara, but it's a bunch of black it's stuff that's around his eyes. Coal. <laughs> Like he's a freaking football player or something, an NFL player. It actually, there was a scene where it kind of showed him like putting it on, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. (laughs) It reminded me of, uh, I was like, uh, is this Robert Pattinson or Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy? But so he puts black eyeshadow around his eyes. So his face blends better with his mask. Yeah, when he has the mask on, his eyes really pop. Right. It's an aesthetic choice that he makes. But he puts too much of it on. <laughs> and a few times he takes off his mask and he's got way too much eye shadow going on. And it's like, what is, what's going on here? And it showed his eyes up close and they were all red because yeah. of all the black coal. And I was like, oh, yeah, that happens to me when like my eyeliner gets in my eye. Hey, guys, a lot of you uh, have been out there asking about my uh, eye shadow routine. Uh, and to keep it uh, fully superficial, his hair. So... Also, his skin tone. I think, like they they made him like Edward Cullen esque. He was very pale. <laughs> oh yeah, he looked sickly. Yeah, he looked very uh, like he, he needs a tan. And then uh, his hair. So he grew it to, and they dye it black, or very dark. Uh, so he's very emo. He's so emo. <laughs> he's so he's so broken. He's affected, man. He's just a uh, he's just a rich boy putting on uh, eye shadow. Uh, <laughs> he's not buying Wet and Wild. He's buying the, the he's buying. <laughs> does he put on eye shadow when he does his podcast? <laughs> hey guys, I'm putting on eye shadow, and Gotham is is really scary. Am am I the reason that people are committing crime? Uh, but overall, loved him. He was great. He was. Fantastic. There was a scene he took his shirt off and you and I both like elbowed each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, in excitement. our patch lifts, honey. And listen, uh, back in the Twilight Day when uh, Team Jacob got all the uh, press and attention because he was so buff and mm-hmm. cut, our patch could give him a run for his money. You were Team Edward, right, honey? Yeah. Well, I was a Team Jacob kind of girl. Okay. And that's where our love affair, our tour love affair diverges. Uh, you mentioned the length way too long. There are film pundits on YouTube. And by film pundit, I mean someone who talks to their uh, telephone and puts it on YouTube. Named John Campia. No, he has cameras. But um, I've seen various people say, oh, it's 15 minutes too long. It's 20 minutes too long. It's 30 minutes too long. Eh, 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 eh. It's an hour too long. It's an hour too flippin' long. And and I I'm I I feel confident that they two hours it would have been the perfect movie it would have been like um uh <clears throat> it would have been just the perfect length left us wanting more uh it, it it's one hour too long and you feel that hour mm-hmm. in your ass you want to <laughs> pee okay if you you. Kids, go p- before you go see this movie, go pee. Make sure you go pee. Okay? That's very important. Because when the credits rolled, you you hightailed it. I had to write a few notes for uh, the review here. Uh, but I, I went pee right when uh, the movie was done also. But, like, take a... I, well, I, what about an intermission, Matt Reeves? Hmm? Yeah. 
these directors these days, yeah. they either need to, they need to rein it in. Yeah. They like bring it in, bring it in close, or let's <laughs> bring let's bring back the intermission. Yes. Play some instrumental music for ten minutes, and everyone can go to the bathroom and get more popcorn and butter. Right. Yeah, it's it's way too long. Uh, it, it was, and it's just, I, I don't know, like, and it was, it wasn't, and they didn't set up a sequel, which I, I admire, but then it was like, well, maybe take, if, if they didn't take that hour to set up the sequel, what the hell did they take that? But if they took that hour to set up a sequel, I would have been like, there he is taking an hour or something. Exactly. It's too long. <laughs> it's too gosh darn long. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, this is where our love diverges, honey. Um, Jeffrey Wright, Wright, who plays Gordon. Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> Police guy Gordon. Police man Commissioner Gordon. And that oop. Actor Jeffrey Wright playing uh, Gotham City Police Department Commissioner James Gordon. I, I, I was not having it. I didn't like it. There was too much. There was too much of him. You liked uh, him and Batman teaming up. I did. I liked him and our Pats doing kind of a buddy cop, solving a mystery and working together. I thought they were a cute little team. Batman shouldn't be cute. <laughs> And he shouldn't be little. And he should barely be on a team. Okay. So, well, my interpretation is that there was, there was way too much of them interacting, being buddy-buddy, being BFFs, uh, too much uh, conversation. So, in traditional traditional Batman movies, whatever that means, uh, my interpretation is that uh, Gordon and Batman are cool. But they're not like buddy buddy BFFs. Like at one point, a bunch of cops want to beat up Robert Pattinson, and uh, Jeffrey Wright keeps going, "Wait, stop, guys! Stop! Stop! No, 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 stop!" And it was like, so traditionally in in, in the other movies, like Batman shows up at a crime scene, and he talks to Gordon, and Gordon talks to him, and then. Batman disappears after like three sentences of dialogue. Here they're like chatting, they're swapping recipes, maybe they're doing a eye makeup tutorials together. I don't know. It was it was just too much. And the great thing about Batman is that he's he's a loner, he's solo, and yeah, he does have Robin here and there or whatever. But uh, uh, Jeffrey Wright is not a Robin, and so I just thought there was way too much of them interacting and working together, um, as opposed to like. Yeah, Batman needs a human, a civilian, whatever, police element to help him. And then uh, Gordon needs Batman to help him. So they're allies in that sense, but it's never like, uh, they're, they're not like doing a freaking The Rock and Kevin Hart movie. Uh, uh, there's not a bond. There's not a partnership like that. And here they're just on screen way too much. That's my opinion. Didn't you like at the end when... Batman said, "You're a good cop." Didn't, yes. Didn't that warm your heart? Yeah, that was that was a good line. That was a good part. But, but that, that should have been like the the eighth line that he said to Gordon in the entire movie. Instead, they have scene after scene, the, conversation after conversation. The yes. vibe, the bond, reminded me of Bruce Willis and Die Hard with the guy. Oh, the oh, guy. Sergeant Al Powell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but. I well, I'm like I said, I'm speaking from just all the other movies. There's a, a, a partnership there, but it's uneasy. Uh, and here they're just chewing up scenery and dialogue and chit chatting and sliding into each other's DMs. Way too much Jeffrey Wright, who's very talented, but they're uh, oh, very often they're both whispering to each other. Oh yeah, th those two. Yeah, they yeah. don't raise their voices to In each other. Intense. Hush tones, talking about the case. Uh, okay, next thing, next issue I have. Uh, and I told you about this earlier, but I don't want to spoil it because I don't remember it specifically. But they chase a lead for about 20, 25 minutes. And they're going down this lead. 
uh, this uh, uh, hunch they have uh, they're going down this road on the investigation and then they get uh, Colin Farrell who plays Penguin mm-hmm. Penguin, and then Penguin says no 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 you got the wrong information it's it's not A it's B and they're like oh okay and I thought it was so stupid like the difference between A and B well spoiler alert uh the the clue they get they just interpret as english but then colin farrell's like no it's spanish and they're like oh okay and you're like okay so for the past 20 25 minutes i've been led astray i've been hoodwinked and it's been a waste of my time i don't think it's a waste of time i because it it was all leading to to a conclusion Mm -hmm. and penguin just helped them figure out the riddle yeah so it wasn't a waste of time necessarily I just thought I, I was jerked around. <laughs> like, were you hoodwinked? I was. It was. Uh, I, I, the rug was pulled out from uh, under me. Um, yeah, I just thought it was dumb. I, well, I hate when movies do that. Like you're going down. Oh, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. And then, whoosh, no, 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 it's this. And you're like, oh. And sometimes that can be done, and it can be done very well and creatively and cleverly. This was not that. This was just like, oh, okay, I, I guess it's Spanish. And uh, anyways, uh, my next issue. Uh, well, to go along with the three hour runtime, nearly three hour runtime. There's too much story. There's too many characters. There's too many last names. I stopped keeping tra- about halfway in. I was like, I'm done with all these last names. I can't keep track of a complex story. Yeah. Give me one bad guy. With yeah. one name to remember. There's a lot of right. bad guys in, yeah. in this kind of underbelly, un- seedy underworld. Yeah. So a lot of names are being thrown around. The guys looked very similar. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to keep straight who did what. and. Yeah. I, I wanted like an IMDb, IMDb page open so I could keep track or like a... When you're looking at a map and in the corner there's the legend <laughs> with all the symbols and what they represent... I needed something, but there was just there was just too much going on. Halfway through, I was like, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm I'm done keeping track. Right there was good. a point. Batman's good, and everyone else is bad. There was a point where I thought if I try to think about this too hard, I'm just gonna get bogged down. Yeah. So I tried to just like, Batman good action. Yeah. Gordon bad guys, just like very simple. Basic. Like, I, I I didn't try to keep track of everybody's names and who was who at a certain point. Yeah. Uh. Colin Farrell as Penguin was fantastic, unrecognizable. Like oftentimes, because he does, he has a lot of uh, uh, screen time. Uh, I would like look at his eyes, and I didn't see Colin Farrell. <laughs> Most of the time, with people who put on prosthetics and makeup, you can like see the actor underneath yeah. there. But I did not see Colin Farrell. Yeah. And I was so impressed. His voice, uh, his mannerisms. uh, It wasn't Colin Farrell. And I thought that was just excellent acting. Very good. I agree. Something else I liked about this movie is the villains. Like the villains in the Batman world are so silly. Yeah. And cartoonish. And that's really fun. I feel like when you're watching the animated movies or the actual comics. Mm Mm-hmm. But when it's in a full-length feature film, I like it to be more uh, believable. Like I could, like I can see myself being in this world. Like mm. this is a real world like that grounded can exist. or relatable. Yeah. Yeah. And so Penguin, his name—they call him Penguin, like it's a nickname. Yeah. And he's kind of odd looking, but he seems he's not like it's it's not a the Danny yeah. DeVito Penguin, right? Which is that... fine and cool in its place in that movie. Yeah. But I like how this was like this could be a real guy yeah that is doing bad things in this big city yeah 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 absolutely yeah he's he's not a a cartoon he's like just a mobster an ugly (laughs) overweight (laughs) mobster um side note uh colin farrell is in the latest hot ones and it's fantastic he's he's such an agreeable fun uh fellow um i recommend you watch it uh, a few of the cops, and th- there's many cops in in this uh, in this movie, but a few of the cops 
uh, they, like they who had speaking parts had really high pitched voices. So you, uh, commotion would be going on, and then a cop would barrel into the room, and he'd be, and you think, oh, something's gonna happen here. This is gonna be dramatic. What are you doing here? What's Batman doing here? Get him out of here! And there were two speaking character cops who had high pitched voices. And I was like, well, what is this? Why, why did they cast that? I can't take that seriously. It's yeah. such nonsense. I noticed that too. That stuck out to me. Yeah. Um, riddle me this, honey. The riddling bit. The Riddler in general. What, what, why? What? Why? Someone compared him to the Zodiac Killer. Okay. So I, I, I get it. Did you dig it though? As like, that's, that's his bit. That's his... That's his entree because he liked puzzles as a kid <laughs> and he's disturbed now. No, I was like, just tell us what's going on. Right. Because you, you know Batman's going to figure it out why eventually. Why are you wasting everyone's time? Again, wasting our, time, our, th- our precious three hours with the Spanish uh, riddle or a clue, whatever. And then these uh, nonsensical riddles. Uh, I thought the I thought the Riddler was kind of a mediocre villain. Yeah. It wasn't very exciting yeah. or entertaining. Um, but I think, like, compare it to The Dark Knight, where the Joker, like, he was the star of that movie. The yes. villain. So I think sometimes the villain can be really, um, like, that's who this movie makes this movie great. Mm-hmm. And Batman's kind of not so interesting. Mm-hmm. But I feel like this movie, because I felt like the Riddler and the other villains weren't very interesting or oh, yeah. they didn't stand out. So it really let Batman kind of shine and be like the real star uh, and draw of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Cause a lot of times uh, you'll see actors, they want to play the villain because it's quote unquote more interesting character. But yeah, Batman here is very, for lack of a better word, interesting. Uh, Paul Dano as the Riddler. I dug him, but yeah, it wasn't, he wasn't great, but then the character wasn't great, at least in in this movie. Um, but I, I I thought he did I thought he did a, a fine job. Yeah, I just think it wasn't a very. He didn't have a, a lot. There wasn't much going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, he he wears a mask in a lot of his uh, videos. Oh, so let's talk about his videos. So he's on some social network in Gotham. It's like some uh, subreddit. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh but he goes live a few times and it looks like like TikTok or Instagram live where you see like comments and likes and all that stuff. And he actually starts one of his videos with hey guys and it's like oh yeah. I I, well, I love that. I wonder if wh- whoever wrote that. I wonder if they were knowingly doing that like Absolutely. Do you think so? Okay. <laughs> Abs- I I, ha- I have to think that. Yeah. I hope so. I love that. It's a, it's a, it's a wink and a nod. Another thing is that he's wearing a mask in a lot of these videos to protect his identity, but uh, it reminded me of uh, the Gimp from Pulp Fiction, uh, is what he looks like. Um, subtitles. I, I wish every movie had the option of subtitles in the, in the theater. Yeah, I wish there were some special glasses, like three D glasses, you can put on, so only you saw the closed caption. Yeah. And then if you don't want to see it, you don't have to wear these special glasses. Yeah. Somebody invent that. Yeah. We watch everything with with subtitles here at home. Yeah, and yeah, and there's a lot of whispering. Yeah, there's a lot of whispering. There's a lot of names. There's a lot of just noise and uh, action. <laughs> and and uh, like we're so used to reading <laughs> yeah. that when we can't read, it's like, okay. I'll... I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, and I missed about... Uh, 10 15 percent of the dialogue of the chatting and the lines uh but on the other hand who cares um but yeah i i wish they had subtitles in the theater um that would help a lot uh so the the music in one particular song and the first three or four notes it goes dun dun da da and all i could think about was the stupid star wars Darth Vader music. Dun, 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 dun. It sounded very similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they play it constantly over and over. Uh, so uh, are, are, are the, are, can, are, aren't those, aren't those, that sequence of three or four notes, isn't that trademarked? Or Well, it shouldn't be. Oh, this is a whole other tangent we could go mm. down. <laughs> mm. 
No, I don't think three notes in and of itself should be trademarked. It's too... Well, they, they should have known. Someone should have known. Someone should have said something. Uh, some, someone at Warner Brothers should have spoken up and said, that's very similar to the Star Wars song. Rewrite. Rewrite. Uh, the waiter... The waiter... The servant... The manservant... The butler guy? The butler guy, whose name is... Michael Caine, uh, <laughs> A.G. Pennypacker. Uh, he has a normal name. A.G. Pennypacker? What is that? And that, uh, oop. Alfred. Alfred Pennyworth. Oh. <laughs> Batman's butler and mentor is played by Gollum. That's right. Andy Serkis uh, plays uh, Alfred uh, in, in this tale. Um, I just think... It's cool to see him like he he came to fame or whatever as uh, Gollum. So so wearing one of those tight bodysuits and crawling all over a green screen. And then he wore the tight green bodysuit again when he was the ape. In the ape movies. movies. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then he was in uh, Black Panther. He was good in. And then he directed the second Venom. So seeing him come from uh, wearing a tight bodysuit and crawling all over a, a green screen soundstage or whatever to uh, being Alfred and directing and uh, starring. I, I just think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's cool to see. Mm-hmm. And, and he's, he's, he's a solid actor. Um, guns, bullets. So Batman's no guns at some point, dude, just, and and his reasoning, so Zoe Kravitz, aka Catwoman, is like, wants to shoot, wants to use a gun, and Batman says, "You're gonna become one of them." Meanwhile, what what is Batman doing that's so great? So he won't shoot anybody, but yeah. he will push people off of buildings right. and whatnot. <laughs> right, he's already one of them. He's just on the good side. Uh, the the no guns thing, and that makes for cool action. Another thing is Robert, Robert Pattinson. Even way back to Michael Keaton, uh, these tight leather suits, they got a punch and kick. I think that's fantastic. You do? Yeah. Imagine being in, a, being in like a tight leather suit like like a Trinity from the Matrix and you're kicking and punching and running around. That's got to be quite the aerobic exercise. Uh, this is the first Batman suit that I've, I haven't thought... There's no way that he could move like that. Uh, I usually I think that. Yeah. Like they're so thick and like you can hear them squeaking. Yeah. When yeah. they're punching and walking and yeah. stuff. It's like when you used to wear corduroys and they went. <laughs> vish, 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 vish. Yeah. But our Pat's suit. Yeah. It actually seemed like kind of lightweight yeah. and uh, stretchy and bendy. Yeah. So I wasn't worried. That always makes me worry. Yeah. But I didn't think about that this time. Yeah, it wasn't like it seemed more soft material. Than a harder material. It was a good bat suit. Yeah. Good, like head to toe. I really liked his look. The the term soft pants, you use that. <laughs> I do. And that means like sweatpants? It's a soft pants that isn't a sweatpants. It's not a sweatpants. It's not a sweatpants. But they are pants. Yeah. And the soft mean so they're not jeans, they're not sweatpants. Are they're, they like they're... chinos or dockers? I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> Are they slacks? <laughs> uh, the okay, so bullets. So okay, I, I realize this uh, this uh, stretchy uh, Batman suit is bulletproof, but when there's twenty five to thirty guys firing guns at Batman, and he uh, takes on the slightest of blows. And he continues to fight, and he seems unbothered. It just gets ridiculous. There... Does it not? There was one time where he like got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah. So the... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I I just thought like, okay, no guns. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but uh, well, near the end, he's fighting a bunch of guys on the catwalk where. Catwoman is also there up in the rafters in some arena or whatever Madison Square Garden and there's 20 guys shooting guns at him and he continues to uh, 
soldier on and fight. So I don't know. Less guns or. Remember he got the wind knocked out of him and he had to inject his, himself with oh, yeah. like some adrenaline, some adrenaline shot or something. Yeah. Yeah. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, he got like he got high <laughs> off of it or something. And now he's uh he's it's like Wolverine getting jacked up. Um, uh, so the the world Gotham, uh, uh, it's it's been compared to Joker. Uh, Joker was more seventies, and this is more mm-hmm. current day. They got phones and yeah. Instagram Live or whatever. This does take place modern time. Yeah, like twenty twenty one or whatever. Yeah, uh, we saw Joker. We love Joker. Yes. Which is the better movie, honey? Don't ask me that. No, Joker. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you. Um, this felt exactly like that very same city mm-hmm. 50 years later. Yeah. But definitely. I loved that. S- same vibe. Uh, very gritty. Uh, very tense. Um, this felt like... Dirty. Yeah. I. It felt like a comic. It felt very like a comic book. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, a realistic city and place. Mm-hmm. It's like it was a, a good balance. It wasn't. I feel like the Christopher Nolan movies are too, like just a like just normal Studio real world movie. Yeah, yeah, too like polished. Yeah. So this had the look and feel of more of like a. Th- there was some sort of a, a, a vibe to it yeah. that was more of like a comic or, um, and like anim. There's something that felt like animated. Yeah, I don't know how to put it into words well you you used to read uh comic books yeah when i was younger i read some of the comic books uh, uh batman or, uh, or... Uh, batman and spider-man i like oh, those too really oh, okay and not not like i'm not super deep into it but yeah. i was just i was a casual reader of it and i really enjoyed it okay and um i've seen some of like the animated cartoons yeah and i actually really enjoy those yeah um and this, so this kind of felt like that, but without being goofy. Yeah. It, like, it wasn't like Joel Schumacher. It wasn't like the Michael Keaton. Yeah. So it was like it was just a really good balance mm. of like the real world and the animated comic world. Gotcha. A good mixture. Okay. Yeah. I I never read comic books and I didn't watch, I mean, I watched cartoons, but I never watched uh, the Batman cartoons. Um. So, uh, Cat, Zoe Kravitz, Catwoman's, uh, hat. So she's wearing <laughs> head to toe leather, like Trinity from the Matrix again. Uh, but then her, like, mask is like a beanie that she cut up. It's like a beanie, and she had a strip that goes across, just across her nose. Yeah. Like her nostrils are covered. Yeah. What? Why? I, I, I don't know. And I was like, okay, well, this is Catwoman in the beginning of the movie, and she's gonna, uh, I, I don't know, head to, Evangelines and old Sacramento and get a leather mask, but she continues wearing this uh kind of felt made up beanie, cut up beanie, um and I think to the second uh, Tim Burton Batman movie with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, mm. she had the the like proper uh, leather face mask. I, I don't understand why Zoe Kravitz they didn't give her uh, the what was wardrobe uh, uh. sick covid that day or something well on one hand like from this particular catwoman character's point of view Mm -hmm. she's not rich yeah so maybe she just she she seemed very like self-taught self-made yeah so maybe it was literally a black beanie that she had at home but why i don't know why she had to cut it just to cover her nostrils yeah uh (laughs) uh and like zoe kravitz uh, i mean what think of however you want to think of her as an actress but her in this movie she was just kind of Zoe Kravitz, and I don't know Zoe Kravitz, but I thought our Pats, well, back to Robert Pattinson having the, really being able to chew on, on some meat, having some material to his character. Zoe Kravitz was just kind of a chick, and yeah, she could kick, and uh, she had some uh, acrobatics, but there wasn't much going on for her character-wise, for uh, script-wise, material-wise. There wasn't. I liked her. I enjoyed Yeah. I enjoyed her scenes, but... Yeah. uh she she did have some fighting scenes which were cool but other than that she was mostly just um kind of scowling at men yeah and being beautiful which she did very well <laughs> very which she does very easily um 
the the end or the near the end uh well okay one one, one thing uh the f- when batman turns into a bat or he has a bat suit and he he becomes like those guys on youtube oh, yeah. who like they look like flying squirrels and they yeah. jump off mountains yeah there's one scene where he does that and i thought it was just terrible cgi looks so cheesy but you on the other hand i thought it was so cool so he jumps off yeah. and his cape that's always seemingly a hindrance when yeah. he's trying to fight and jump around and do stuff. Yeah. Well, it has a purpose because he can fashion it and zip it up and all of a sudden he's a flying squirrel. Yeah. Or I guess a, a bat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he jumped off the building and he like flew through the streets. Flew. I thought it looked really cool. And then he kind of, he didn't have a smooth landing. He kind of crash landed, tumbled yeah. and then like limped away. Yeah. And the scene was over. I, I thought it was great. I thought that was just really bad CGI. And you could tell because the camera uh, cut off at his forehead. So it was it was an odd angle. Um, well, f- flying scenes are really hard to do. Because uh, you're, you're not going to put our pats uh, in the air. Um yeah. But I thought it could have been done better, like with a stuntman or like a real person who does it on YouTube when they jump off a freaking cliff and they just start flying around, uh, soaring around. Um, But yeah, well, you liked it. I didn't. We're still friends, honey. I still love you. (laughs) Uh, We'll we'll, we'll try to make this marriage work. Um, But yeah, uh, diverging opinions on that. Uh, Okay, the end. Uh, uh, the the water flood thing uh, eh. I just thought, whatever <laughs> <laughs> so did i yeah well it, it's hard to in batman movies it's hard to put gotham in peril and so that you really feel that gotham is at risk here and uh the chris nolan movies tried to do it um with bane blowing up a football game and okay uh, but it's really hard, darn near impossible, and I don't think it is accomplished here. Uh, Paul Dano, aka the Riddler, blows up uh, some walls that block water, so water starts flooding into Gotham, and then they all go into Madison Square Garden, and it's mayhem and cheese, and uh, and that's where uh, thirty guys shoot at Robert Pattinson, yet he manages to ward them all off. Yes, honey, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the water. <laughs> Agua. I, as it, as it escalated, the violence and the destruction. Yeah. Just like with any superhero movie, like the more buildings that are destroyed, the less my investment. Yeah. Like my investment goes down, my caring. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, <clears throat> now what? Yeah. Where can we go from here? Yeah. I think it, well, it's a hard balance because in comic book movies and stories, it has to be, it has to be like huge and massive. It has to be right. big scale. But I think I prefer and am more interested in smaller stories, like yeah. when a family or a person is trying to be saved. Yeah. But once it's like the whole city, it's yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Is that a... Because it, I guess tragedy doesn't scale in terms of movies. Like when, when it's when you know the people and you're familiar with batman and bruce wayne uh and and i was along for the uh, for the ride uh for most of the movie but then you're like oh the the whole city's involved now and uh the madison square garden has thousands of people it's just chaos commotion and you're like okay what's gonna happen where's this going how long will this last this is nearly three hours of my life the entire city is destroyed yeah i think it's more effective when like like the fear that it could happen Mm. or like the riddler has this plan and it's all gonna happen yeah yeah but then once it actually does happen yeah i'm like all right yeah (laughs) that's exactly what uh dark knight rises uh which you you didn't see no but uh bane is a badass and you're like oh he's gonna he's gonna mess stuff up uh and then when he actually does mess stuff up you're like okay uh, okay and and, and uh and to uh to uh 
uh, to your point of uh, not caring, uh, Paul Dano, a.k.a. the Riddler, uh, is in jail in, in the last third-ish of the movie. So uh, this whole flooding and uh, uh, final big confrontation showdown fight at Madison Square Garden is between Batman uh, and a bunch of Paul Dano's henchmen. And it's like, who cares? Like, Paul, I care about Paul Dano because he's been built up. He's had uh, an arc. He's had a, 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 a huge part in the movie. And then he's in jail. So you get a bunch of his lower level thugs shooting right. Batman in, 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 in the catwalk in the, up in the rafters. And it's just like, who cares? This is, I want Paul Dano to be out uh, in the trenches, in the streets, fighting. And I realize uh, Paul Dano looks like uh, an egg. <laughs> he has zero physicality about him. But I, I think he needed to be like out there in the battle. Um, instead of just a bunch of nobodies, uh, and yeah. it's like hey. he, the Riddler is not—he's uh, not a physical fighter. Right. He's all about the brains, yeah, and his maniacal plans. Yeah. But if he had been out there, and if they hadn't caught him yet, that would have been like another element of of scary, yeah, fear. Like yeah. we haven't caught him yet; he's still out there. Yeah, and he could have been surrounded by six hundred henchmen, and that that uh fighting could have uh, raged on. Um, but I, I think just having him in a prison cell or mental Arkham Asylum, whatever, is just, just so, okay. Like he's, he's, uh, been, de- uh, immobilized and now Batman has to fight a bunch of dumbasses. Yes. It's almost like we know Batman can take all these guys. Yeah. We know Batman's going to fight him off. Yeah. And, and we know how physically he's going to yes. punch and he's got choo, 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 doodads yeah. and gadgets. So the only like threat is all the explosions. Like Riddler's plan is it's all coming to fruition. Mm-hmm. He planned it. He's doing it. It's happening. But there's it almost feels like there's not a real threat. Well, the entire city like being destroyed. But again, yeah. I don't really care about that. <laughs> right. Destroy the entire city. <laughs> What's up with uh, Team Edward Cullen? Hmm. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I really loved was uh, the car chase. So yeah, loved the Batmobile. Yeah, the Batmobile from 1989. Uh, Michael Keaton has been very high tech, and it's always cool. Get that out of the way, but it's been very uh, gadgetry, wizardry, uh, super high tech, and it's shooting rockets and it's shooting lasers and. Uh, in one of the Nolan films, he turns it into the the bat bike, like uh, so. It, it's like, ooh, wow, zippity doo dad. There's a lot of this is really cool. This is really high tech, but this um, Batmobile, it's a muscle car, and there's not mo- there's nothing more to it. Like, there, there's not a, a machine gun attached to it or anything. No, there's just that like blue fire that comes out the back, and he gets like a yeah. Like a super speed boost. Yeah. But other than that, it was just a car. It's a car and it's super cool. Bulletproof, I think. But, you know. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like an American muscle car. <laughs> um, and I thought that was way cool. Just a complete turn from what the Batmobile has been for 30-ish years. Um, and just different. And uh, there's a car chase with uh, Colin Farrell. And... Uh, some of it's in the trailer. I mean, the 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 peak is in the trailer when he drives through a big ball of fire or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I knew that was coming. But uh, when when it happened in the movie, I was like, "Wow!" This is... and there was just like the engine. Um, it, it's not. It, it ain't no Tesla motor, okay? Like it, it ain't no Prius. Uh, it's a real muscle car. And uh, just that chase um, with with uh, Riddler, I'm sorry, Penguin, uh, was just done very well. Mm-hmm. Just really good. Like it was, I would describe it as like a chunky chase. It was just, there was a lot of meat to it. It was very meaty. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, it, was a, it was a chunky boy chase, it was like, as uh, we like to call our cat. And a oop. He a chunky car chase. And a oop. Alrighty. Well, are we done, honey? Yeah. Alrighty. Well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder 
next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your Wayne family. Please be sure to use our promo code for stamps.com. We don't have a promo code for stamps.com. Goodbye. I love you. We love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, I may have advocated for people to steal butter from the movie theater, but I'm still a good person and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. A bye bye. And that oop. Ooh. Is that chicken? Is that crispy, juicy tender?